Hello class, this is Miss Augustine and we are still talking about atoms and atomic theory and today we're going to talk about how we can relate mass to the number of atoms and so we're going to introduce something called the concept of the mole. So we have to have a way to relate mass to number of atoms and the reason is in order to do anything in chemistry you're going to be able to measure things and how do you know that you're measuring the right amount. So we must have a way that relates mass and grams to the number of atoms because in a, in a reaction you're going to want to know that you have the right amount of X and Y to make the reaction take place. And so this is where we talk about the concept of the mole and this little fellow here is the mascot for the American Chemical Society. So the definition of a mole a mole is defined as the amount of a substance that contains as many atoms, molecules, ions, or other particles um, as that in 12.01 grams of carbon. So let me say that again. The definition of a mole is the amount of a substance that will contain as many pieces, atoms, or molecules as there are in 12.01 grams of carbon. And it turns out that if you have a sample of 12.01 grams of carbon, it contains exactly 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is called Avogadro's number. And it's named after this fellow. So Avogadro's number is named in honor of Amadeo Avogadro de Quareña, who lived um, from 1776 to 1856. And I'm just going to show you a picture here of Trader Joe's guacamole. And if you've ever gone to Trader Joe's and bought their guacamole, it's called Avocado's Number Guacamole. And I'm going to point out that on the packages of guacamole at Trader Joe's, look at that picture. It's the same one. So why is it named after Avogadro? Well, it turns out that Avogadro did a lot of experiments with gases. And he proposed that if you have equal volumes of different gases, as long as they're at the same temperature and pressure, they contain the same number of molecules or atoms. And again, the number was named for him. He did not calculate it. It was many years until that happened. But the number was named in honor of him because of something called Avogadro's Law. And that is what this is right here. Avogadro's Law states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of particles. So the mole is a counting number. So how do you buy donuts? How do you buy computer paper? How do you buy pencils? How about soda? You use a counting measuring amount. So for instance, a dozen donuts is 12 donuts. That's a counting number. A ream of paper, ream means 500 sheets. A gross of pencils means 144. And a case of soda is equal to 24 cans. So all of those are examples of counting measures. So the mole has that many pieces in it, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a fairly amazing number. So one mole of paper clips would go around the earth 4 trillion times. A mole of large marshmallows, not sure why this statistic is out there, but would cover the continental United States 650 miles deep. That's a lot of s'mores. And one mole of pennies stacked up would be the distance to the moon times 2.38 times 10 to the 12th times. So you can see that this is a fairly large number. What about a mole of water? It turns out that a mole of water is equal to 18 milliliters. And that tells you how small molecules really are. So if I had my little graduated cylinder and I put water in it, when I get to 18 mils, that's the same as one mole of water. 
mole of other substances. A mole of iron is 55.85 grams. A mole of sulfur is 32.07. It's not just individual grains of iron or sulfur. Where are these numbers coming from? So it turns out these numbers are coming from the periodic table. These numbers right here, I'm reading them off the periodic table. So let's talk about molar mass. The definition of molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of an element or substance. So its units would be grams per mole. This many grams equals one mole. And molar mass is really a general term that we use for the mass in grams that contains a mole of whatever the particle is. And the type of particle is going to depend on what your substance is. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I was talking about elements, then I would be talking about atomic mass. If I was talking about things like sucrose or other sugars or starches, they're molecular compounds, so I would be talking about gram molecular mass. If I was talking about ionic compounds like sodium chloride or calcium chloride, I would be talking about gram formula mass. So. What we're talking here is really semantics. Depending on what the substance is, the particles would be different. If I was talking about the molar mass of candy, it might be gram M&M &M mass. So it depends on what substance you're talking about. So types of molar masses. Gram atomic mass is the molar mass of an atom or element. Gram molecular mass is the molar mass of a molecule, which is non-metallic uh, compounds. And the gram formula mass would be the molar mass for ionic compounds, metal, nonmetal compounds. And again, examples there. So molar mass is the mass that gives you one mole of an element, and it's equal to the atomic mass found on the periodic table. So for elements, the unit, as I said, is grams per mole. And what we're going to be doing is, when we're reading off the periodic table, because remember when we were calculating average atomic mass, it might be 16, or it might be 15.9994, or 12.0107, whatever. So what we're going to do is, since the uh, masses on the periodic table are going to vary quite a bit, our convention is going to be we're going to round all element masses on the periodic table to two decimal places. That would be the hundredths place, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen we round to the thousandths place. And again, we will be using this all year long, so it's really important to get in the habit of rounding correctly as soon as possible. So for instance, carbon would be 12.01 and hydrogen would be 1.008. And when I have those masses of those two elements, it means that I have the same number of atoms, because these are elements I'm talking about. And so 12.01 grams of carbon and 1.008 grams of hydrogen both contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. The gram atomic mass of any two elements must contain the same number of atoms. So carbon on the periodic table is listed as 12.0107 grams per mole. Rounding to the hundredths place would give me 12.01 grams per mole for atomic mass for carbon. Oxygen, 15.9994. Rounded to the hundredths place will be 16.00 grams per mole reading off of the periodic table. And hydrogen, 1.00794, is going to round to 1.008. So as we do these and as we use them for calculations, we're going to um, have to be careful to always round to the hundredths place. And later on this year, as we continue with this, um, calculating the molar mass is going to be something that we do all year long, right through to the final exam. And so you always want to make sure that you're rounding correctly so that you don't lose points as we do our calculations. So the next tutorial will lead us through actually using these numbers. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.